Uncensored on regularradio.com. Back live, two hotheads where activism happens. Well, that was a uh, a quick break, and now we got a a big phone call. Do you know who we have on the phone, Heather Mac? Well, I know his name is Russ, and he works for Jobs with Justice in Massachusetts. Yes, it's uh, Russ Davis. He's the executive director of Massachusetts Jobs with Justice, and we're going to talk to him about uh, the Black Friday <laughs> picketing outside of Walmart because workers aren't being able to be represented like they, they would wish uh, locally and nationally. Hey, Russ, how you doing today? Good, how are you? Excellent. Can you tell us about this? Because we're, uh, we're not labor or union insiders, so we're, we're, and a lot of our audience isn't either. We'd like to hear about uh, why Walmart workers are picketing on Black Friday. Sure. Um, well, it's actually, you know, it's not a union thing. It's a worker thing. And it's not necessarily even picketing. But what's happening is uh, Walmart workers have been organizing into an organization called Our Walmart, Organized United for Respect at Walmart, across the country because they're fed up with, you know, lousy wages, uh, you know, unaffordable health care, uh, not enough hours, et cetera, all the things that are plaguing, I'm sure, a lot of your listeners. Um, and so they decided to do something about it at the largest employer in the world. So they've been organizing, and when they started organizing, some of them were fired. Um, and to protest them, uh, co-workers being fired, some of the workers across the country on October 10th and, uh, and around October 10th uh, went on strike for the first time in history, both at Walmart and in the warehouses. And that uh, is going to happen again on what's called Black Friday, which is the busiest shopping day of the year. That's the year the, t- the day of the year, supposedly, when retailers go into the black, so to speak, when they when they make start making their profits. So it's a big day for Walmart, but it's also a big day for working people. Absolutely. Year. Let's hear it for that, because that's incredible. The first, the first protest followed quickly by more protesting, more pressure. And, uh, and hopefully more solidarity from people, uh, from shoppers and from, uh, you know, your average consumers um, who really need to know about this. And to know that when, you know, when you're paying for something, you're not just paying for an item. You're, you're in effect, supporting um, the systems that created that item, that, that brought it to you. And uh, we should be very careful and very aware of where we put our money. And I, I'd like to know a little bit more about um, what the workers are protesting um, I know you said, you know, fair wages and, uh, you know, health care and all these other and benefits and stuff like that. Can you give me some more specific examples and anecdotes of, of uh, you know, just what, how, how workers have been treated uh, by Walmart as a company in the past and, and, and currently? Well, again, uh, what they're actually, you know, sort of technically protesting uh, is the firing and, you know, victimization of their fellow workers. They're not actually protesting their conditions. There's kind of a legal distinction there. But but what we're actually asking is, uh, you know, people all over the country are going to be showing up at Walmarts to show their support for the workers. And if people want to join an action near them, they can go to a website called corporateaction.org and just go to uh, put in your zip code and find the nearest Walmart and join an action. The actions themselves are going to be uh, you know, leafleting of customers. Some people are going to be talking to the workers. People are going to be doing candlelight vigils, uh, caroling, all kinds of stuff. And, and frankly, people can do whatever they they want to support the workers. I mean, the workers themselves have told some pretty horrific stories about, you know, being fired when they had to take a day off because their kid was in the hospital. You know, things like that. You're, you're in a workplace where there's just no protection, no respect. If, if you have a decent boss, it might be okay. But if you have, a, you know, a horrible manager, there's absolutely no way the workers have any recourse. So they've decided that, uh, you know, now is the time to organize. And I think a lot of people around the country are, are thinking the same thing. So we can, we can as, uh, we, we don't work, like as uh, people that are listening that don't work at Walmart to support workers and the workers at Walmart... We can show up at these actions and show our support. Is that true? You can organize your own actions Ooh. at your local Walmart, even if they're not uh, organized. Excellent. Go on that website that I mentioned, or you can you know look up you know 
at the Walmart website, I guess, and find out where the nearest Walmart is and, and uh, you know, put your action on the website and try to get, you know, friends and neighbors to join you that day. And like I say, some parts of the country, the Walmarts are opening at 8 o'clock at night. That's another, uh, on Thanksgiving, that's another source of uh, unhappiness, right? It's, I hear these retail right. companies, and frankly, it's not just Walmart, that are cutting into people's day off by making workers, you know, come in. Like, who wants to go to work, you know, at 8 o'clock Thanksgiving night? Maybe you've been having dinner with your family or watching football or whatever. You know, so they're taking time away from, from families by doing that. In Massachusetts, the stores aren't opening until, you know, 1 o'clock Friday morning, but that's still pretty bad. So uh, depending on when the stores open, some people are going at the stores opening, some people are going the next day on Friday, but it's, it's really up, you know, it's up to you. Um, Excellent. But we're we're hoping this is a sort of a national uprising again. Absolutely. We're, we're, we're definitely, we're looking at three three different locations that we've been uh, talking about a lot on Facebook, and we'll check that website out. Uh, Framingham. Um, Lynn and Quincy, th- those are the three that a lot of uh, my friends I've been noticing have been talking about going to on Black Friday, and I definitely will be at one of those. That's awesome. Right. Well, we're hoping to have all 48 Walmarts in Massachusetts covered that day. Wow. The next day. That's so. unbelievable. Let's hear it for that. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. That's something to be proud of. And it, and it could quite an, quite an audience you have there. Oh yeah, yeah. right. I know, huh? Yeah, you like our sound effects. Um, it it really couldn't have come at a at a you know at a at a more um, I don't know. People have been talking a lot about workers' rights in terms of um, I know a lot of friends of mine personally have been talking about hostess and the hostess shutdown in Massachusetts right. and how uh, you know there's this whole argument that it's unions or workers' rights that somehow uh, failed the the businesses and that's why it, that's that's hurting the market and it's hurting businesses and hurting jobs so that workers' rights hurt jobs how. How can we dispel this myth? I mean, I, we we need a we need to break that uh, that w- that uh, mindset, uh, and I, I need your help on this one. Well, I think one reason we're going after Walmart, um, and again, we're not necessarily picketing Walmart. Um, we're, you know, we're we're just showing up and talking to people. But you know, this is Walmart isn't the only bad company out there, but it's the biggest company, and it sets the trend for the yep. economy in terms of. You know, downsizing, uh, part-time jobs, poor wages and benefits, uh, outsourcing. So, you know, I think workers in all kinds of companies, whether they're blue-collar, white-collar, whatever, are, are fed up. You know, we're four years into a recession brought on by the big banks and the hedge funds. They're doing great, and we're not. And right. so I think, you know, now that the economy is starting to pick up a little, just like in the 1930s, that's when the big worker uprising happened in this country. You know, once the economy starts getting a little better, people feel a little more confident in, in speaking up. So I think the why that we've gotten so much response to the Walmart stuff is people are inspired because they, you know, they realize that what the Walmart workers are facing is, you know, true for a lot of workers. And, the, and the bosses have taken advantage of the bad economy to, you know, cut wages and do all kinds of things um, to workers in all kinds of companies, and I think the only way we're going to turn that around and have a better economy, and in fact, an economy that actually works, is uh, you know to organize and fight back. That's yeah, it. Exactly. I mean, yeah, we all we're all feeling it. My, myself personally, so recently, all the things you're saying, and I am not uh, in any union, but that that's exactly. That's exactly it. I, I loved what you said, Ross. And also, also that investing in workers is the way to build a good economy. That that exactly well. You know, making you know, making workers union. that uh, have have money in their pockets and have confidence that they can, uh, you know, that they, they can participate in the economy because one false move isn't going to send them, you know, in into debt. That type of that type of uh, attitude is what builds our economy and makes our economy sustain itself. Right. Well, again, this isn't about unions, but people should remember, you know, unions workers. are called unions because they're a union of workers. Yes. So that's all we're talking about. A union is just a group of workers taking collective action. Absolutely. Uh, and one of the things that's, you know, true that most people don't understand, and obviously it's hard to enforce sometimes, but that's why Jobs of Justice is there to support people. But even if you're not in a union, you have the legal right to strike. 
So workers can take action even if they're not in a union. Now, obviously, you're more protected uh, if there is a union supporting you, but um, this is really about, you know, deciding that we don't want to live, you know, under these conditions anymore, and you're seeing that in Europe last week where there was a continent-wide uh, general strike coordinated um, union and non-union workers went on strike. So, you know, we're going to see some of that uh, on Black Friday, but I think more and more uh, people are realizing that, you know, the only way to address what they're facing in their daily lives at work is to organize. Yeah, so it's about Absolutely. organizing workers more than anything else. I love that message. Um, tell us more about Jobs for Justice, because I've become familiar with your organization. I'm really impressed. I want our listeners to know what you guys are doing, how people can support you. Right. Well, Jobs for Justice is a national organization, um, and in Massachusetts, we're, you know, all over the state. We're kind of like Occupy, except we've been around for 20 years, and we work very closely with the folks at Occupy, but it's really the same issues. It's, you know, it's economic inequality, it's fighting for health care, you know, fighting for immigrant rights. Um, so we're a coalition of organizations that includes unions, community groups, religious groups, student groups, and, you know, we're... We believe in active, you know, direct action, uh, peaceful, nonviolent direct action is is how we're going to, you know, make our point. Uh, so if people want to get involved, they can go to our website, uh, which is uh, MassJWJ, which is Jobs of Justice, MassJWJ.net. Um, but really, you know, just like we saw a year ago with Occupy, until people decide to take that step and actually do something, we all know that what's happening is wrong. We all know that the economy is stacked against working people, but it doesn't have to be that way. You know, there's no reason. The only reason it's like that is because we let it happen. So if we all organize and take action, we can begin to turn that around. And I think, you know, whatever you think of the candidates, a lot of people feel like the election showed that, you know, this sort of right-wing corporate agenda is being rejected by the majority of the American people. And, you know, now it's time to put the... Absolutely. Put in practice what we believe uh, should happen. Absolutely. The real work on the street. I, I thank you so much, Russ, for taking the time on a Saturday, on sure. a busy Saturday when you're in the middle of all these. We didn't even get to La Meridian because we've been covering that as well. I know you guys, are you guys doing some uh, work with work on that? Yeah, absolutely. Can you say, before, but, uh, yeah, before we let you go, can you say something about the La Meridian and the hotel workers in Boston and Cambridge too? Yeah, I mean, the Le, Le, Le Meridien is kind of a fancy hotel, uh, you know, right next to MIT. The workers have organized a union. Um, workers in a lot of the hotels in, in Boston have a union. Some people may remember the Hyatt, which is yes. a non-union hotel, where they fired 100 workers with no notice and replaced them with temp workers at, you know, half the pay. And uh, so these are hotel companies run by hedge funds, you know, billionaires. That's what we're really talking about here is the billionaires, the yeah. Walton family that owns Walmart. So anyway, they they organize the union. The company is refusing to negotiate, so the union, along with the, uh, a lot of community support uh, in Cambridge, is uh, you know going to be in front of Le Meridian and talking to its guests until uh, justice is done. So I encourage everybody to join that. Information about that is on our website, too. Well, thank you so much, and, and I encourage everyone to get active and support these Actions. Absolutely. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun, but thanks for having me on. Thank you so much, Russ, once Let's again. for Russ and Jobs for Justice. CorporateAction.org to find out more about how you can get involved. Black Friday, that's next Friday. Um, and Ma of yeah, MassJWJ.net. That, that yes. was the uh, their website, too. Yep. Definitely check that out. Yeah, so when you're... Was, so you... I'm sorry to cut you off, though, Heather. Totally did. Black Friday. Totally, so I'm you, used to it You had a big now. line. I know. You had I a big line. I was going to say, Black Friday. I mean, you know, again, a lot of people take... It's. I, I personally have boycotted Black Friday for a while now just because I think it's kind of gross. And, uh, yeah. You know, just the, it is the, gross. You know, disgusting but now I'm com displays now we're coming out. Of, uh, yeah. of consumerism. But, um, you know, I think this is this is a way to take it back, to take this back is what Black I love. Friday, to occupy Black Friday, yeah. to, to shop local, to figure out it. where you're going to, you know, it. if you are going shopping, to, to make sure that where you're putting your money isn't supporting... Uh, 
you know, corrupt corporations that are that are taking money out of workers' pockets. I'm going um, to Walmart to support the workers. Absolutely, and to support exactly the workers. You know, workers. but if you can't go out and do that, at least at least pay attention to where your money goes. And remember that when these workers are losing their rights, when these workers are, you know, workers at Walmart are getting fired, and it's all under the guise of, oh, well, we have to save money. I mean, this is this is something this that uh, you know is happening now after after the election. You know, people are are justifying bosses are justifying taking jobs away and and uh, and closing down operations because of uh, Obama or liberalism or this and that. It's all a farce. It's all bullshit. Don't buy those arguments. It's never okay. Yeah, look at all it's the money. Okay. Look at all the money. They just like and when they're taking away yeah. Walmart workers' rights, they could be taking yours next. Russ made the. I, I loved having this guest on Russ because he really gave me a lot of education. It's about because I start seeing unions. It's about workers. Number one, like he said. This is a workers' rights thing. You can support the workers. And secondly, he, he started to talk about the things that really are interesting when you look at who Walmart is, when you look at these big corporations that own these hotels, when you look at Hostess, the bank loans they took, the amount of money that they gave their CEOs, why they cut the employees' pay. Why they, they, they're blaming it on the unions, but the unions gave them everything. They gave nothing. They took everything. They robbed and stole. They, they ruined these companies and took all this capital. That's what they turned. It wasn't about uh, workers. It wasn't about the product anymore. It was about amassing capital through these corporations and the financing schemes that they set up. It's about the banks. It's not about uh, the workers. It's not the workers' fault. Come on. I, I, I'm a libertarian. I consider myself a libertarian. And I, and I watch the people on my Facebook page coming after me who are supposed to be libertarians. Right. They, don't, they don't support worker rights. That's what it comes down to. I don't care. You can look at your utopian world the way you want it to be, but that's not the way it exists. Unions, workers' rights, if you don't support that... Then how do you support liberty? Yeah. I mean, I mean without, without the ability to, to I mean, be able to have a job, have a steady income for the work that you do, be able to count on... If you can't have heart you, for those people, those yeah. mothers, that when you looked at those hotel workers, you're talking about Vulnerable the high... Populations. Those were grandmothers and mothers that were yeah. cleaning. They went from $16 an hour to no job. They replaced them with like a $7 an hour worker. Living in Boston, right. and who then you can see live the, on that? The upper crust, too, I got just got their big uh, yeah. uh, scandal of, uh, you know... Of, of them withholding workers' wages and, and taking advantage of, uh, of vulnerable workers that were working there that didn't know their rights, that and didn't they, understand yeah. that they were being taken advantage of. And, and now they're, they're having to pay uh, a whole bunch of money to those workers. And so they, thank and God they're justices. trying not to. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. exactly. These corporations are out of control, a lot of them. And the ones yep. that are, workers need to step up and, and I think support each other. I would think the libertarians would agree with that. I think because a lot of us Because this is the do. problem is that a libertarians a lot of the time they talk about how the government is out of control but the government is so in, t in, in bed with corporations that you can't you can't extract them from one another. I think another. some libertarians are like me and they, and they see through that. I, I really yeah, do. I do too. So, uh, Libertarians we have you, on our show. Yeah, if, <laughs> if anyone wants to weigh in on this, yeah. we've been going for a little while on this. 617-606-4122. We also have a, a full studio yeah. and really cool established people here that are real activists. Uh, we got people from, you heard the uh, Russ talk about Occupy movement. Yep. We got occupiers here. We got mass can normal people here. Yep. We got people fighting the wars and the Federal Reserve here. We got, uh, we got a whole crew. So yeah, we why don't we uh, take a break i guess and we'll get we'll get it all in all right. we'll take some phone calls too what's our number 617-606-4122 that it's it yeah that's the one give, give us a call two hotheads where activism happens on unregularradio.com